This is the Dan Levator Show with the Stugats Podcast. On the first play, Kenny and Charles and Shaq wouldn't shut up about college football atmosphere, never seen anything like it. We all want to put on uniforms and play. And their season ended on the first play. <laughs> Before we get to that, though, I want to spin the wheel of issues because a lot of people are very interested today. Uh, Brad Williams has fallen out of the sky, a comedy uh, legend, a giant in comedy. Huh? Giant. Good words. <laughs> I think that's accurate. Brad Williams is triggered. Are you okay? Very Falling triggered right sky? now. Yeah. I don't know if I'm okay. I didn't sleep last <laughs> night. The, 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 this hotel was right next to the arena. There was parades going on. Someone had, someone had a pickup truck with a basketball hoop on it. A random five-on-five five started happening yeah. Yeah. in the middle of the street. It, it, it Welcome to Miami. So I'm... I'm here on the day to be the voice of the fan to calm you guys down so it's not all Miami talk all the time. Well, we've got a couple of different issues here to attend to. Greg Cody Tuesday is here. We've got a lot of people here. It's very crowded with a whole lot of people who haven't (laughs) talked for four days, many of them who spent half the weekend haunted with a hole in their stomach because the worst loss in the history of South Florida sports, tenths of a second left, you shouldn't care like that about anything. You do. You're a fool. It's the wonder of sports. But for two days, you lost all life perspective. You're walking around with a hole in your stomach because Boston's going to laugh at you all off season because you're the first to go and lose after being up 3-0. And it wasn't just that they were going to laugh at you. It was Boston was going to laugh at you. And we haven't had that feeling around here in general, the fear and all of it, in about 10 years since the very beginning of what LeBron did. <laughs> Total insanity, fear, <laughs> pooping themselves. Parakeet Cortez, I saw, I saw from an investigation that your avatar was going to move to a Panthers hat. A Panthers hat immediately. <laughs> None of you believed they were going to win that game. Mike is sending out tweets. None of you. Mike is sending None out tweets saying the season is over. You're welcome. Can we? Thank you. Can we give Mike a little? Yeah. Did what I had yeah. to do. Yeah. When I saw yeah. that tweet from Mike, I was like, oh, wow. today's going to be a good day. The Thank great you, ones Mike. know when they're needed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's spin the wheel of issues. And I just, before, wow. we, before we get into the wheel of issues, it's heavy, obviously. You've got, do you want to start with the history of Boston and Riley on the wheel? Do you want to start with rivalry? Do you want to start with, I believe that certain members of the shipping container, including Greg Cody, rooting for loss last night hmm. so that work would get easier? Whoa, no. Around here. Don't put that in my mouth. I if, I, if I could give Greg his flowers, I know he's a writer, but his tweet really <laughs> met the moment last night. And I just want to yeah. stand back and appreciate. Thank you. What a great storyteller. You Bob Ryan esque. You get me. Thank you. I you mean, want, you want to tell people what that tweet was, Mike? That would help. It was simply the letter A. Yeah, lowercase to be understated. Mm-hmm. What I'm trying to do is give the Miami Heat. An A, an A grade. Excellent. The, the plus would have been superfluous. The capital letter would have been showy. I wanted a little lowercase A to speak for all of South Florida. Done. And no minus. Efficient. That's right. He, chose, it. he chose to be efficient. Hold on. There's more. Oh, there's more. On the wheel, there's Ooh. just hole in your stomach. Right. There's two number eight seeds ending Boston seasons of great hope. Mm-hmm. There is Bill Simmons, Mike Schur, Reggie Miller, mm-hmm. Tatum, Bam, and Fubar on Netflix. Spin the wheel. It's a loaded wheel. It is a loaded wheel. I can't see it from here in the new studio. Billy, uh, what uh, what did it land on over there? Ooh, it landed on, uh, I don't see it. Hold on. Two eight seats. Yes. The two eight seats. Oh. Thank you, Chris. Oh, wow. Yeah. Couple of eight seats cutting it up. Go That's ahead, right. Dan. Out. There's never been a better time in South Florida sports history than right now. Upsets and Boston tears. And you feel like you've already won, even if you don't win in the next round. And Solaire's hot. I mean, geez. That's not on the Ding wheel. Ding dong. Mm-hmm. 
Really surprised it didn't land on FUBAR when it was near you. you I don't control uh, the wheel, Dan. You, I were just secretly, tell you, what says. you were secretly rooting for everything that happened at the end of Game 6. I want you to be honest because I accused no. you by text of giving a fist pump the way Very that rudely. I did secretly many years ago when Udonis Haslam dunked in a Chicago game. An when, admission? Finally, an admission. This is a we big got day. That. We got yes. that. Hey, ago, huh? Ten years in the making. No, we, we got it before. He did that. He revealed that. Billy, yes or no, game six, because Mike Ryan and Chris Cody had fallen to the floor, just gutted, gutted by a loss like there's never been in this city. None. None has felt like that. None. Not Allen Houston. <laughs> Fiesta Bowl would like a word. Mm. Mike, the Fiesta Bowl you had to hear from Ohio since then. No, I had to hear from all the college football. That, that, that was a game six, and I know you want to do the hole in the stomach show, but that – is a totally forgotten play. Yeah. The no Jay one will ever remember the Derek White buzzer beater. The, I love no that. one. The yeah. first totally year of the big three, Dan, kind of felt bad after losing. It did. Stugatz is I mean, they lost to J.J. Perea. If they ended up losing in game seven, the Derek White thing surpasses Allen Houston. But there's no surpassing the I'm Fiesta talking Bowl. about in the moment that it happened. I'm not talking about what happened after that. I'm talking about what you walked around with for two days. And I, I had an entire game and the peace of mind knowing that Joe Missoula was not going to come wow. back Mike, on Eric Spolstra. You, you are such – Yes, this is Miami bullshit what, man? I, No, yeah. I, I took about 40 milligrams and I went to bed. That's what happened that Mike, night. <laughs> Mike, of what? I texted Admiral? you. You're so fraud. I mean, Miami fans, you're – what? I had another game to go. Mike, it's fine. Mike, I texted you, are you ready? And your answer was, I'm still mad about Saturday. It was yeah. like minutes before yeah, the game. Was that mad. was private. But, but, you know, that, that was a private message, not the performative right. stuff that yeah. we do. Shame on you. And congratulations, Billy. You went super viral last night by putting out the schedule. Oh. Yeah. Billy was on it last night. He put out the schedule. <laughs> Hundreds of retweets. I got, I got Billy really? tweets being sent in group chats. I have no affiliation with Billy. And he went <laughs> super viral just by putting out the schedule. And then Bam <laughs> Bam misses the bunny, and everyone is crushing Bam. And then Billy, helpful Billy. Heat Nation's rooting for you, Bam. <laughs> <laughs> I, just said, I just said Heat Nation knows you're trying, Bam! Exclamation mark. We're with you. Yep. Just in case, sometimes people need words of encouragement, Dan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, everyone's screaming at this guy. Imagine if he goes out in a timeout or, like, between quarters to go to the bathroom or something, checks his phone, he just sees all this stuff, then he's in this bad headspace. He needed a positive one, so I put it out there. Didn't tag him because I didn't want it to be, you know, a little showy, but a little support for our guy, Bam, huh? I was in Good. three different group chats yesterday that were thankful for Jalen Brown elbowing Bam in the face because he was doing what everyone in Miami wanted to do. Wow, that's a, that's harsh. Come on. I mean, Bam needs no, the man, support. Please. Never forget what Bam did in Game 6. Never forget okay. what he did in Game uh, 7. Mike, but forget all NBA, about Derek White. You're in the NBA Finals. You won by 20 Thank yesterday. You, we won by 20 yes, yesterday. Thankfully, our second best Heat player Lakers. carried us to victory, <laughs> Caleb Martin. I was, I was frustrated with Bam, and then Stan you know, pointed out the great screens he was setting. Oh, yeah, that's, why, just, that's why you pay the man screen, money. Screens it put it in a loser perspective. Stat. Guys, it's a winner stat. We're he's a the, winner. It's a loser stat. Bam Adebayo is a winner. Yeah. He's in his third conference finals win. Please he's in his second this. finals in four years. Loser he is an gosh. anchor of this team. He, I'm not going to hear anchor, any right. of this. He's today. an anchor, all right. Eastern Conference champion, Bam Adebayo. Mm -hmm. Two time. Two time. Okay, I don't know whether you guys very quickly after that had the thought that I had because I called my father and he was uh, swaggering around very happy. And I'm like, if Bam looks like that against Boston, what's going to happen against Jokic? I can give you some sample size stuff that is probably not great for Bam. Well, but I, but I, if that's what it looks like, if that's what it looks like in two games at the end where you really need Bam, I was laughing. My father, I was tickling him, chortling. I'm like, the Zeller minutes. It's, <laughs> it's throw some Kevin Love at him. See what happens. What, see what happens there. The Bam meltdown is not what we should be talking about today because he plays great defense, and one of the reasons they're great is because of their defense, and he's important. And if he mm -hmm. frustrates you because he's missing layups and you want him to be more aggressive, that happens from time to time. He's not Jokic. So the last three seasons of Bam versus Jokic matchup data, this comes courtesy of HP Basketball, sees Jokic averaging – 52 points and 25 assists over the course of 44 minutes. What? I mean, who cares? Don't Defense wins that. championships. That's Bam right. was plus 22. 
I mean, enough. You guys, you're mm-hmm. in the NBA Finals. What are we doing today? Jokic is a betting favorite at minus 125 to average a triple-double. My he over, my overall point. Look, he did. He's, he's almost done that all postseason. He did it to Phoenix. He lost both games, averaging a triple double. All I'm going to do today, though, is tell you, the season's already won. It doesn't end in laughter of down 3-0, and Boston gets to celebrate. There, it put up the banner of Boston tears because anything after this is gravy because they didn't deserve to win game six. They don't deserve to be this deep into the playoffs the way that they played this season. The whole season's a gift. Really, Dan. really, the banner should just be the Bill Simmons photo. Yeah. Yeah. That's the Bill Simmons photo. Raise it up. That's so good. UD <laughs> raises it up to the rafters, and then it's in every pregame from here till the end of time. UD, his seventh finals. We don't go to the finals without Udonis Haslam as a franchise. Exactly they right. should resign him. Mm-hmm. Udonis will decide when Udonis' career ends and no one else. Well, he's already decided. Well, I don't know. I think, <laughs> yeah, I think it's time but to revisit he'll decide that. when he wants it right, to end. He's already, yeah. but he's, he wants it to end. Yeah, we'll see. He'll he'll change his mind. the pomp right. and circumstance of the goodbye. He said he's... He's ending it. Yeah, Run it back. so is Tom Brady exactly. several times. Run it yeah. back. You got to see how the season ends because if this ends with a bad taste in his mouth, maybe you know, run it back one more time. Mm-hmm. What a great pivot from Stugatz, not having any idea or memory <laughs> of Udonis having already said that he's on this not show playing. last <laughs> week. We need to we need to we need to cut Stugatz a break because he's a national champion. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Who is a well, really, Rachel? Rachel yeah. is a national champion. You had a huge hand in it. Do it against Alabama. All those miles. Or do it against Alabama. A little thing in it. Uh, He said that on air, I think. I think we all heard that. I'm turning into Greg Cody. I'm a national champion. You're turning into Greg Cody? Ringing it. It's not happening now. It's been happening for a few years. Greg Cody, local Homer and historian. Thank you. For half of that. You know where we are historically, column-wise. Give it a spooling, storytelling punctuation. Best ever. And you know it! The Heat receiving the Bob Cousy Award and the Larry Bird (laughs) Conference MVP Award... As uh, Ernie Johnson said, uh, it's not lost on me, the irony of this, but uh, is it ironic, sad, or hysterical? Fritzy? I think it's pretty hysterical to me. All right. Seton? Yeah, I mean, it was going to be my best of the weekend. Okay. I thought it was just, I was absolutely <laughs> dying last night watching. And Ernie, yeah, he had a great, right, uh, you know, the irony here is not lost on me. Marv? Oh, hysterical. All right. Pauly? Yeah, hysterical. That's a, that's a brutal weekend. That, and a holiday weekend in Boston. Uh, all the bros were out, all yeah, tanned oh. up. Everybody primed for a historic night. Oh, Got yeah. to the beers in yet. Yeah. ever. Yeah. <laughs> here's the, here's yeah. the Larry Bird trophy, Jimmy. Let's bring in Dan <laughs> Levitard, host of the Dan Levitard Show with Stu Gantz. And uh, Dan, good to see you. It's always nice seeing you, uh, Dan. I've got a little bit of chaos around me here. We've got uh, a very electric uh, sort of vibrating uh, Miami, and we're coming off of a uh, historic uh, United America last night feeling very good about itself because they they would be able to laugh at one city. Last night was a winning night for America. Either today would be about (laughs) laughing at Boston fans or laughing at Miami fans, and... uh, America wins today, and here's the best part about it. America was going to win today no matter what. One hated fan base was going to allow you to laugh like that today. So congratulations to America. Yeah, but I don't know if America hates the Miami Heat anymore. No? No. We kind of need it. We kind of need it down here. They hate Miami, Dan. Oh, but not not the Heat. I believe that uh, all things Miami are something that divide America. Do you guys hate the the Miami Heat? Like Jimmy Butler's a great story and Caleb Martin and Gabe Vincent and Eric Spolstra. And we need the hate. We've been starved for the hate since 2010. (laughs) Why are you not understanding what's happening around here? Wait, the lights just went out on your show. Oh, my God. Haters. What happened? Haters. (laughs) 
Bring back our hate. Okay. Well, I, I'm sorry that the power has gone down here. I can still hear you, though, Dan. I can still hear you. You never look better. I love it. Yeah. Anybody got any matches? Yeah. How about a candle? Look, Something. I'm running. I'm running a media a empire somewhere. here, Dan Patrick. This I is can, a very exciting I time in our history. Man. Uh, everything shakes and creaks down here with the enthusiasm. We've lost all power down here, so I'm sorry this isn't a better televised affair. Do you? you see, it, is you this? I like it. Here? I like it. I like it. By candlelight. Can you see me? Okay. Can you see me now? Is this the uh, Levitard Blair Witch Project? I, uh, I'm sorry that I literally, after leaving ESPN, can't keep the lights on. Stu Gotts, pay the bills for the man, will you? You want me to pay the bills? Get out of here. I don't pay my own bills. I mean. uh, what would it be like today if the Miami Heat had lost last night? Well, here's the thing, though, Dan. Do you know what a gut punch game six was? Like, yeah. when do you ever see it'll get forgotten by time? What would have been something that in Boston would have rang eternal, like Dave Roberts stealing a base <laughs> and when they were down 3-0? Derek White gets lost to history now. He's yeah. just – it was – the the reason that I say this felt the way that it did uh, back when Miami and the world were fighting is because – Everybody was willing and ready to laugh at Miami being the first to drop a 3-0 lead. Derek White doing that as a gut punch. If you like sports, you can hate Boston and still be like, man, that was amazing. What an amazing ending. And Boston would have had that forever. Instead, they had it for two days. It's gone now. Like it just, it is, it evaporates into something like, oh my God, that team was a laughing stock. And here's the best part if you want to laugh at Boston. Boston season ended on the very next play when Jason Tatum. <laughs> hurt his ankle like the very next time they played a basketball play everything that Derek White gave them was gone and so it's just it's something you can laugh at just How? like us losing the lights here at, at a seminal <laughs> moment in sports history in South Florida where we've got two eight seeds ruining Boston season two eight seeds ruining everything Boston wants to believe in as hope we really hate Boston it's a legitimate rivalry Dan we don't have those anymore it's a legitimate rivalry. Those are the best two teams in the East the last four years, and they hate each other. Going back to Pat Riley hates Boston because bleep Boston. Okay, who's more important to the Heat and their success, Eric Spolster or Pat Riley? Uh, why do I have to choose? You have to choose. Dan. I ask you to choose. You Look, it's Dude. sports radio. Exactly. I Tell mean, them, DP. Look, I mean, okay, <laughs> Eric Spolstra learned in the dark crevices of the caves of whatever obsessive compulsiveness. Sort Pat of what Riley's you're in right now, a dark right, cave. Exactly. <laughs> this, look, in sports, Eric Spolsta, he was spending years <laughs> sculpting in the dark recesses of the film room before technology was good. <laughs> like he's, he's splicing up tape and he comes through 30 years of that. And now what is it? Seven seven finals or Eastern Conference finals, whatever the numbers are, half the time they get that far, and it's all of it. It's not just Spolstra. It's Spolstra handed down from Riley because he learned all the Riley stuff, and they still go face-to-face -face on confrontation even though Riley's damn near 80 years old. Will you answer the man's question? Damn. I mean... I don't... I mean, who built it? Pat Riley built all of it. Okay, like, so, Stu Gotts, let me ask you. Yeah. Who's more important? Uh, Eric Spolstra. In fact, Dan, I would tell you that if Eric Spolstra has ever had thoughts of going somewhere else because he is tired of this question <laughs> and tired of being under the umbrella of Pat Riley, I would tell you after this season, his stock will never be higher because he has made it to the finals with Jimmy Butler as his best player. And when you consider what jobs are open right now, Eric Spolstra can say, hey, here's my salary. I want team president. I want head coach. I want control of everything. Not surprising. And go do it in not, Milwaukee. Not surprising that Stugatz would turn Spolster <laughs> winning into a leverage play. Listen, <laughs> how about, well, it is, but how about we stop giving Riley credit for something that Spolster is actually doing? Okay. Because Spolster is on the bench and he has coached these guys that within four games of an NBA championship. Okay, but what I would also say, Dan, is you see coaches who are on very good teams. A bunch of superstars are available right now because Doc Rivers can't do Joel Embiid. 
Uh, you got Kevin Durant gets Monty Williams fired. There are very good jobs available that are never available. And in Miami, Spolstra knows that the guy who was with him in the video room is with him still because he's got organizational stability behind him. It doesn't matter who you choose to me. It doesn't. He could have gone to Portland, gotten an ownership stake, could have been president, could have had power. But he's been comfortable growing old here, learning what he's learned here. 30 years of you saw him. Dan, have you ever seen after a game six, a coach going into Boston for a game seven as an eight point dog banging on the table? I want to tip it up again right now, right now. I want to. I want to tip it up again. Like you could give, I, I don't know why we have to separate the credit. Why do we have to choose between them? Why can't it be organizationally? This is a really strong organization that has done more winning this century than the Celtics, you know, basketball's most historic franchise. See, this is why I'm starting to hate the heat again, because people like Dan Levitard <laughs> telling me all that. And by the way, don't take credit for the Florida Panthers here, Dan. What do you mean? I, I mean, aren't they closer to Bo Boca Raton? Uh, they, yes. uh, they, well, actually, we were Not saying even. that the uh, boat parade is going to be airport uh, <laughs> because they, they, they exist in a marshland. But yes, it's, it's aggressively. Uh, I mean, Sunrise, Florida, that's where you go to die, isn't it? Whoa. <laughs> I mean, well, or the Sawgrass th Mills Mall. Good thing right. we have an expert in Greg Cody here who lives right over there. <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> exactly. That's right. Right near my house. But you know what? I'll tell you what, Dan Patrick. Uh, Spoh's loyalty to the Heat is baked in. His loyalty to Riley is baked in. He's not going anywhere. He's not going anywhere, Eric Spoelstra. He's a Heat lifer. Book it. That's our popular uh, Greg Cody, long time. Uh, Total uh, homer. Uh, yeah. Total it, homer. Absolutely. Like, that, that, especially he just this gave, week. He just gave you book it like it was a <laughs> 70s detective catchphrase. Thank you. Book it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Put it in a book. Write it down in a book. Bank it. How big is Jimmy Butler? If we had power rankings six, in, six. in Miami. I know. I, our athlete power rankings. Is he a one seed? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, what do you? Oh, yeah. Are you oh, kidding this, me? Dan, you are doing the show I've always wanted to do. Power <laughs> rankings for Jimmy Butler. <laughs> God bless you, yeah, One seed. Yeah. One A. Okay. Over anybody with the Dolphins. Anybody Anybody else come in? To, anybody from the Florida Panthers? You know? Okay, you're talking about uh, present or all-time? Um, how about current, and then we could do all-time? Okay, but this is what we need to do if we're going to go to, you know. Can you put up a test pattern at least on your screen there, like something? It's just. I, I, buddy, I don't have control of the technology God, here. This is embarrassing. I, it is embarrassing. <laughs> I, you don't think I'm embarrassed right now? Do you think that I'm <laughs> filled with buoyant champion pride right now? This is why Mike Ryan left. But as you, he hasn't left. You just can't see him because he's got his head, his hand, in his hands in the dark. I can see. Well, it, he's he going to be left. leaving. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaving now. Yeah, I don't. I can get out. Get out while you can. To answer your question, this is why it's funny, the question that you just asked. Yes, Jimmy Butler is in the process of trying to wrestle away the legacy and team of the Miami Heat from Dwayne Wade gave us the greatest feeling and LeBron James gave us the greatest feeling. However, in the last two mar uh, games, Caleb Martin has been their star. Caleb Martin has been their best player. Over the last few games, our Michael Jordan has been outplayed by <laughs> Caleb Martin over the last half of he the season. He should have been the MVP last night. Well, that's Reggie Miller's fault. He said it on the broadcast again and again. Why and was... are you yelling? You don't even have lights on then. You don't even have the status to yell at me right now. Because Reggie Miller told us on the broadcast last Surprise night. Surprise the again. audio works there out of that studio. Good God. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Man, Can I'm... you see me at all? No. It's a dark screen. Why am I holding these lights to my face? I can't. Making me sweat. He's been holding the phone to his face for 15 minutes. Uh, Dan, it, 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 for 12 minutes you have been in the black and in the dark. You can't see me at all? No. <laughs> the power is out in the building, Dan. This is great. I have no idea how we're connected to Dan Patrick, honestly. <laughs> It's hot in here too. All right. It's well, sweating. now I'm now I'm here. Now you don't have any signal here coming. Oh my God, I feel bad for you. 
Metal Arc you Media. You fallen already. Hiring yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Hiring now. <laughs> as media falls apart all over the United How States. How about technicians? Hiring technicians right now. A lighting director. Something like that. you got to start with the basics. A good We're foundation, a brand, Dan. A brand new studio. I'm sure it wasn't cheap, Dan. I'm sure it wasn't cheap. Oh, no. Cheap. I saw the tour. I saw the tour of the studio. Look great. Uh, Do you know how hard it is oh, to pay rent and buy things in <laughs> Miami right now? Do you know how expensive things are here? Stu Gotts, Greg Cody, and Dan Lebitard make up that powerhouse show, the Dan Lebitard Show with Stu Gotts. And a, you know what? You're onto something. A blackout show. You know, we see we see audiences do it. You've done it with the show. Congratulations, Dan. I'm deeply embarrassed. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. That's Dan Lebitard. Man, he's fallen on hard times. FDSPN and man, feel bad. On one of the most anticipated days in show history at one of the most enthusiastic times at any time that I have lived in South Florida. Ah. <laughs> you may hear that I am presently doing the show via iPhone with the shipping container standing behind me in the dark, including, inexplicably, Brad Williams. <laughs> I have one functioning microphone. I am hooked up to the iPhone. We have just crapped out, like just shit ourselves on the Dan Patrick show. <laughs> And I have behind me in the dark people I cannot see, all of them. I have Roy, I have Jeremy, Tony, they want to so badly speak. Mike and Billy and Chris Cody are here, again, and inexplicably, Brad Williams. <laughs> Greg Cody is next to me, Stu Gatz is next to me. Chris Cody, can you come over here to this one function microphone? And just tell us what your observations are on what just happened with Dan Patrick, how embarrassed I should be as someone in charge of Metal Arc Media who has just seen his company shit itself on national television. Well, we definitely shat ourselves on Dan Patrick, but I blame Bill Simmons for this. Do we know that he didn't cut all the power around here? All right, media elite is what he's going with. He had his routine. I asked him a question. He decided to do whatever it is he wanted to do. I ask you again, what stood out from what just happened with the content with Dan Patrick? I think that we showed that we can, we mean business. When shit hits the fan, we keep it together. You put together a segment in the dark. Hmm. This is keeping it together? I mean, keeping... technically, we had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> I was impressed. Okay. Uh, impressed is what you were by what we just did. Interesting. Go sit in the penalty box. Whoa! 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 Because he was telling me before we came on here that what he was most amazed by is the way that Stugatz kept trying to grab the steering wheel in the dark to what we were doing with Dan Patrick at one point just shouting LeBron for reasons nobody could understand. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I felt like you were uncomfortable because, again, the power went out and we were in the dark and you were using your cell phone as lighting. And so I was just trying to be a good teammate, Dan. I felt you were uncomfortable. I felt like you needed someone to chime in. And so I was the guy. I mean, I was trying to be here for you. Don't criticize me. What did I do? I'm not in charge of electricity over here. I wasn't criticizing you. Chris Cody was until uh, I asked him to do show, and then he decided to blame Bill Simmons for our power uh, outing and a conspiracy involving the media elite that want to silence Miami, which deeply wants to be hated right mm -hmm. now by the country. He really, though, Greg Cody, Dan Patrick flummoxed me when he said, who hates you guys? We're just busy hating Boston. That's right. It's a popular thing now. Um, but, but we're doing the best we can here. You know, everybody hates Boston. Derek White, you know, he was a legend in the making, and now nobody remembers his name. I barely remember his name. I had to think Derek White, right? But, um, you know, Show killer. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sweating like a pig here, Dan. I'm sorry. I'm trying to do show, but we lost also our air conditioning here. Uh, Mike Ryan, how do you generally feel about how everything is going uh, right now? Just in general, I want to discuss what is a very historic game in South Florida history that people are expectingly wanting to hear from us on, and it's not going well so far. I'm terribly embarrassed by, by all of this. I'm proud in our ability to do a segment such that it is, though. But right now, my mind is 
trying to figure out exactly how we're going to put together a show because we don't really have an ETA on when the power is coming back. What was bizarre about the entire experience with Dan Patrick is despite everything turning off, the connection stayed sturdy with Dan Patrick, which I don't quite understand. So you were still able to do that segment as our world was falling apart around us. But we're not going to be able to do an entire show like this because I am melting right now. Yeah, it's gotten very hot in here. Billy, can you come over here over my left shoulder, please, just real quick? Hey, Tickle him. Yeah, uh, I, I, I just want to know. Read in the room, Chris. I have to, why is he still here? Why is he not? It's very dark. dark. I can't it's dark see. in there. It's I dark. can't get out of here. Go sit in the penalty it's box. Scary. Don't, it's scary. I don't scary. want you here anymore. Uh, Billy, I just, uh, this is all I want to know. This isn't Chris, this is Jessica. Oh, that's God. You can't see. Get out of here, man. Your judgment is really bad. Just not reading the room. I mean, it's hard to read the room when you can't see anything. Fair point. Fair point. Hey, Billy. Yo. Did you do this? Just to support you, Dan. Whatever you need, I'm here for. Billy, did you do all of this? You'd be the betting favorite. Did you find a power structure in here that lost us out of the ability to do a show today? Because you wanted to do the show as soon as game six ended secretly. I feel like this is going well, all things considered, don't you? I do. Why are you so Unbelievable. My chest is off today. Brad <laughs> Williams, do you have, where are you? Can you come over near my right shoulder, Right please? shoulder. Oh, oh, my so oh. yeah. Sorry, you said, where are you? I thought that was a short joke. <laughs> You're a professional comedian. Do you have any experience uh, with the power going out during a show, what you're supposed to do? I actually do. Uh, in New England, it was in Hartford. Hartford, Connecticut. The power oh, went out in the Hartford uh, Mall, and uh, we, everyone, put on their iPhone lights, and I just had to scream at people uh, with no microphone. Even got heckled by someone when there was no power. How do you feel like this is going so far? Uh, I think it's going fantastic. I'm a guest in your house, and uh, if this is the house, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a the great house has no lights. Yeah. It's not a great situation. Mike Ryan, what are you doing with my cell phone and its uh, flashlight? Why is it not in the right place? We're trying you're to. Yeah, you're blocking the the view from the one camera that uh, we have. So I'm in charge of lighting as well as making sure we get a show out today. All right. So just tell me on the computer that does work you are here. Very damp. Yeah, I'm, I'm sweating <laughs> because this is uncomfortable. But uh, all the tickling. I mean. uh, <laughs> Mr. Gods, what is the third thing trending over there? on your computer the very third thing uh bill simmons anybody here have any thoughts <laughs> i listened to the bill simmons podcast that was fun he brought his dad in there um i made sure to listen to what they felt like after the the Derek white made basket at the buzzer um because uh, now none of that matters it is not going to be remembered whatsoever and i think that's the funniest takeaway from everything is that all this narrative was was building. You had former Red Sox from the 2004 team. You had Derek White already christened as this cult hero. And they got their asses handed to them by 20 at Game 7. What's been really weird about these two teams that have been running this conference outside of the shortest offseason ever was that home court advantage, advantage didn't matter whatsoever. You had the Heat lose Game 7 on their home floor. You had the Boston Celtics lose Game 7 on their home floor. You have the Panthers and the Heat winning as many games in TV Garden as the Bruins and Celtics this season. Um, it's a really bizarre matchup, these two teams. Saying nothing of Bill Simmons, though. The idea yeah. of that, because he, he's not wrong. He's not, he's not wrong. Like, if you listen to their podcast, which I implore you, everyone is sick of Jalen Brown. Everyone is sick of Jalen Brown, and I think the Miami Heat discovered this last year in the playoffs with him, is that he can't dribble. He had eight turnovers, and, I mean, dude was looking like he, he should wear a lay, like, most of that game. Everyone's pretty much over the Jalen Brown thing, which I found pretty interesting considering the ceiling on him, the start that he got to off of his career, but he's 26 now. And there is no hope that he can improve that aspect of his game. Stugatz, he's going to get uh, 50 gonna, million. He's, well, he's going to be in the ability from Boston to get the richest contract in the history of the sport. The Supermax, near $300 million. I think Jalen Brown's hand is hurt 
but he misses all his threes last night, eight turnovers. That's the reason they didn't win in the finals last year, Stu. Guys, he can't dribble. They've got a fundamental problem at the core of their franchise that when you ask him to be the number one, the way Miami asked Caleb Martin to be the number one, what you get is what you got last night when Jason Tatum is hurt. They need Jason Tatum. to. The, the whole franchise in Boston, the whole blueprint is built upon if Jason Tatum gets his ankle hurt in game seven, Jalen Brown can't actually carry this. Uh, Jalen Brown is still a very, very good player, though, and he's going to get his money. If not in Boston, he'll get it elsewhere. I would tell you, that's on Missoula last night. You have to recognize that you're playing four on five out there, and you take Jason Tatum out. I don't care that it's a game seven. And you know who you put in, Dan? You see if Blake Griffin has one oh more. Oh There's God. one more in the tank. Oh Can he God. give you 22 off the bench on a what? night that you need it? Yeah. Just summon something what? up in a big what? spot, former All-Star. You can't leave Tatum. Tatum couldn't move. You don't put him out there in a Even game that Blake. requires movement. You so don't you have do that. Blake being the replacement for Tatum. Uh, it's the best they've got. All right. Yeah. Uh huh. I agree with him. Thank he was. You. A, how are you still oh, here? Yeah. Get out of here. No, stay. Stugatz, you were asked about Jalen Brown. How did you go to you got to bench Tatum and play Blake Griffin? You were just asked about Jalen Brown. I said he's a good player. He'll get his money. If not in Boston, he'll get it elsewhere. But I, that's what I do. I mean, I shift to the Blake Griffin. <laughs> you shift the blame to Missoula for uh, not benching Jason he's Tatum. A great coach. Suddenly, I mean. <laughs> 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 That's a good point. Thank you. I got a quick power update. Uh, uh, I finally got a return phone call from Reddy Kilowatt. He says the oh, lights Jesus should be Christ. back on by early June. So <laughs> oh, that, what? Yeah. Uh. It's true. Who is that? That's Ready tomorrow, Kilowatt. Right? Yeah. Oh. Show killer! <laughs> ba, 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 ba. I don't have access to the sounds here because That's the why Brad's here. Are, no, you, <laughs> but if he's here, you can leave that. Whoa! Oh, wow. Don't, wow. Be, wow. Don't, be, don't be with your son. Wow. wow. Never. Thanks for the update, though. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Air conditioning out here. All right. Do you know how hard it is to give me less help than I just got from Stugatz when I asked him a Jalen Brown question? Ooh. He went straight to Missoula, Tatum, and then... <laughs> Blake Griffin. Wow. Wait Blake a Griffin. I'll, but just see if he can summon something crazy. up. Uh, yeah. Listen, I want to talk quietly. Is there a way to get Greg Cody on the Horde Network out with no equipment? <laughs> can Brad make a sound? Is there a way that we can do that? How do we get... <laughs> With no nothing working here and us running toward the end of the segment, he's asking how to whisper when he gets back, I, so that we can get as a show. We're just gonna go. No, I I, I can have a timer. Uh, I have my clock ticking up right now, but if it ticks down, yes. it can be right. like the iPhone okay. standard right. iPhone. Right. Buzzer. Let's see when he comes back in here whether or not it's surrounded. I've got now. Uh, please explain to me, Mr. Gods, how many iPhone lights are in our face right now? What is it? Is uh, I would say roughly uh, nine. <laughs> nine. How many people are in this very small, damp, uh, humid, no air conditioning room? It's right starting now? to smell. Yeah. 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 How, it's not, it's not how, how many? How many are here right now, Mr. Gods? Give me a number because we've got video in here. This uh, this slip shot operation has. Uh, a whole bunch of people, not a lot of lights. How many people are in here? Uh, 74. <laughs> but how many are really in here? Like 11. There's 12. That's a lot. There's a lot it's, of people. Uh, a lot in of a people. small room, we have 12 people here on one of the most historic days. Oh, 13. No. 13. Group, 13. group, group hug. Has walked in. 14 go, go, go get back. your father Jesse's here back. so that I can get his historian's <laughs> perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, did he, he embarrass you at all how maximum homer he was on the Dan Patrick show? Uh, Just, uh, that's, his, that's his role, though. Yeah. I mean, he's a, he's a poignant, nuanced opinion in South Florida sports history. That's why you got the tweet yesterday, A, like he just cuts right to the heart of the matter. Hey. Mm -hmm. Chris, uh, Greg, I'm sorry we stole your seat here. Can you please uh, sit down here and give us some good- Who needs me? Good mm -hmm. content, not, you know, a bunch of jokes. Can don't you give us- Don't grab that mic. You don't need that microphone. <laughs> that microphone's not, right. we've got this one functioning microphone. Okay. And what we need from you is a little bit of expertise <laughs> as a South Florida, historian as somebody no no jokes around here okay right. we're all joking but you're a maximum excellent uh storyteller you chronicle miami's history in sports in the market and we presently are in what has to be viewed as not just the most exhausting time for you as a sports columnist working very hard but also 
um, you know, an exuberant time because you're torn between loving it and being, you know, tired. So uh, explain to us what's happening in South Florida right now. We have two eights playing like aces. How's that for a reference? <laughs> but, wait a minute. Is that the thing? <laughs> that, that's the hard network out. It's not like my popcorn is done in the microwave. What the hell's going on here? Jesus Christ almighty. That, the hard network out should not happen during a power outage. It's, it's, it's just not even fair. Cut those phones out of my face. What are you doing? I cut it down here.